A dog is for life, not just for lockdown. Welcome to Mark and Pete Live. I'm Pete the clergyman. With me, as ever, is Mark the businessman. Uh, boy, have we got a show for you tonight, We haven't we? I think so. Mark, what, what have you got for us? Well, I'm afraid I'm feeling dog tired. Why is that? Mm. Well, quite simply, many people are giving up their dogs yes. because they've had a little bit of a peak over the last year of buying dogs, but now want to get rid of them now that we are no longer in a lockdown situation. Now, I must say that this is a bit of a concern. I know that you like dogs, uh, clergyman Pete, mm. but here's yeah. a trend. The Dogs Trust said it had seen a 35% increase in calls related to giving up dogs in the last few weeks alone. Mm. Where are they all going? What is yes. our recommendation here? Clergyman Pete, yeah. what would your advice be? Well, the thing is, I think we, we do need to take uh, having a dog seriously. If you're going to have one, you're taking on a responsibility. You know, I, as you say, have a dog. And I've had a dog for some time. For the past three years, I've had a dog. And I grew up in my family when I was a child, we had a dog. So we're just used to having a dog around. And uh, I know the sort of commitment it takes, uh, but there's something specific to having a dog because of the usual situation of lockdown mm. that um well i've got something to say about it and i don't know not sure that uh gentle listeners are going to be that happy with what i have to say but yeah uh, we'll try i'll say that a bit later mm. <laughs> stop really stop around for that <laughs> yeah but it is a concern, though, isn't it? Because last year, many, many people thought, hmm, we're all in a lockdown situation. We can't go out. So mm. perhaps the idea of man's best friend, the doggy, coming in to help just to sort of make us feel a little bit more homely. But, of course, this trend of uh, the, the pets now, and particularly, obviously, puppers, um, has, has actually actually caused a bit of a problem as well. The price of puppers are more than doubled during lockdown, with dogs costing almost a staggering £1,900 on average. That's a lot in itself. But here's a thought from my point of view. You see, having a dog, as I'm sure you'll give a little bit more of a tip here, is, is not just a simple case. It's just a having it around the home. You've got to feed it. You've got to take it to the vets. You've got to walk it. My goodness, it's a lot of work. Here's a thought. Pause for thought. If you choose to have a lockdown doggy, and you're finding life just a bit too groggy, because all your carpets are extremely soggy, Perhaps you should have got a little moggy. Yes, <laughs> maybe the idea here is instead of having a dog, why not get a cat? Yes, uh, yes, yes. I must ask you, uh, you're obviously not a cat person. I will tell you that I have a lot of cats in, in my area and uh, they're very friendly. Um, they keep down <laughs> the wildlife, yeah, yeah. Um, but not everybody likes a cat. Strangely I'm not. Uh, well, yeah, I'm not sure what having cats in your area means. You mean you mean they just uh, live near you? You don't actually own. No, one they yourself. seem for some reason to like my back garden. <laughs> Right, yeah. No, I am very much a cat person. I, I really like cats, but I grew um, an allergy to them. So oh. I, I just have difficulty breathing with them around, which right. means I kind of, but yeah, I, I do like cats as well. Um, I'm a big fan of animals. I, I have animals in, in, in my possession at the moment. I have two guinea pigs mm -hmm. and I have a dog. Yeah, but you can't dog. take them for a walk. Uh, no, you can't think of a walk, but they, they run around and squeak and they're just pleasant to have around. But do yes. dogs... Are we talking um, about your guinea pigs or your family? <laughs> both, uh, to, but more the guinea pigs. But the dogs are... I mean, the thing about having dogs, I think the reason for having them during lockdown was the emphasis by the government uh, on having a time of exercise. So obviously, uh -huh. if you could take the dog for a walk, that's a time of exercise. And it was sort of... You could see how it clearly became associated with that. Now, my dog is three years, three years old. I bought it when it was a puppy from a local farm. Mm. It's um, it's a type of dog known as a Welsh Collie or a Welsh Sheepdog. Yeah. It's very similar to a Border Collie, slightly bigger. Um, it's not a Kennel Club recognised breed. You know, they they sort of all of them look slightly different. They're bred for intelligence and endurance. They're the sort of dog. They're a working dog. They can walk all day and so they're not the sort of dog this sort of dog a working dog is not the sort of dog you should get for lockdown uh, i mean not that any dog should just be for lockdown 
unless you're going to sell it. You know, if you have a lockdown and then you pass it on to someone, I don't have a problem with that. If you're going to pass it on to someone who seems responsible, you can yeah. you can you can be careful to who you sell it to. Uh, that's that seems to be fully reasonable, but you can't guarantee that. So you have to be prepared to well, look after it because you can't guarantee you're going to find someone good. But the selection of the dog is the important thing. You, you, you've got to do your, your research, your, your due diligence. And this is the unpopular thing I was going to say. I was going to say, look, if you've ended up with a dog that needs more exercise than you prepared to give it, it's not the dog's fault. No. So the dog, uh, I believe, has a duty of care from you for you to take it for those walks. Now, I have to say, you know, um, I said that I have a dog which – needs a lot of exercise it's a, a breed that's a working dog you could get away with giving it a lot less than it actually recommended i might uh, i or someone in my family takes it out for a walk at least twice a day it has a good walk um and has proper exercise but you could get away with doing less um what's needed is for it to get out and, and, and you know and just have some fresh air Yes. Or rather, some filthy air, smell some filth. That's what dogs like. Rutera. It needs to have something interesting to do. Even uh, the most docile of dogs does need that sort well, of something extra because they're intelligent animals. Yes. Well, exactly. But uh, now here's from a commercial perspective. Now here's an unusual statistic because earlier this year, the Pet Food Manufacturers Association said a total of 3.2 million households in the UK had acquired a pet since the start of the pandemic. That's a lot. Now, what was interesting here was the it was young people who were the main drivers of this trend. So this is said, according to the, the, uh, the manufacturer and their, some of their research, it was owners aged between 16 and 34. Now, I, maybe it was just my perception. I would have imagined perhaps people slightly older would have done that. But that is the trend. Now, I don't know whether you have any insights to, to why that would be. No, I, mean, just, I just put up, uh, I know we're drawing a lot of the uh, information from an article on the BBC new side let me let me just uh, put up the uh, bit from the article this is an image from the article this is the reason you see this image oh, on the yeah. screen uh, so the the loving little dog with the so ugly it's cute face uh, that's the dog not not the, <laughs> I was going um, to say. Yeah. uh you know yeah. and she's looking there she's looking at a computer and the dog's just peacefully looking there yeah. it hasn't as far as we know it hasn't done a poo on the uh, on the sofa or the not dog. yet uh, no, no, the dog has neither, and so yeah, it's um, it, it's that sort of image, that idea, rather a false image. That that's what dogs do. And may, I would say that's that's partly it, uh, that, and also the idea of you know, yeah. if you're gonna, just going to do a little bit of exercise every day, taking the dog for a walk goes with it. Um, so you notice the more than half of new pet owners oh, yeah. are aged before- sixteen to twenty four. So you've got people who. Uh, young and energetic, they but could be taking you, them for walks. They could keep doing it. Before you Should move be- the article down, I wanted to ask yes. you this question because the answer will be revealed for those who are ah. looking at the video version. Now, it is um, there are <clears throat> approximately 34 million pets in the United Kingdom alone. So, yes. Bowden and Pete, how many of those include dogs? Uh, 34 so, million pets? Yes, in the United Kingdom. Approximately. Uh, uh, 28 million. Uh, no, 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 definitely not. No, no, no. For too high? For way too high. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to make one more guess. I'm going to go lower than I think. Go well, a good million. idea, yes. <laughs> 10 million. <laughs> That's not far off. It's 12 million dogs, as the mm. article has What are there. the other pets, then? Were there? Well, Fish? exactly, because the thing is, there must be budgerigars, you know, goldfish, you know, pterodactyls. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, probably, yes, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, the, the thing is, is that that is um, a lot, isn't it? That's a lot of pets that need feeding and caring. And I think well, the one thing, and I think we should point this out because it's a serious subject, the RSPCA um, previously warned, warned that the boom in pet ownership could turn to a crisis for those animals um, once their owners returned to work after lockdown and could no longer give their pets so much attention. So to your very point, clergyman Pete, and I think this is a, this is a lesson, which is when you make a commitment to a living creature whatever that may be, it is a responsibility. And I I think the thing we need to emphasize here, it is for life, isn't it? That's what we're really saying here. Yes. And by life, we mean their life. They need to be careful for the rest of their life. Now, I'm just going to take the other side of it now. I say, well, 
really you commit to doing the exercise and you were doing it to start with why why should you stop well there could be there could be life circumstances mm. that mean that it's it is difficult uh yes, but also you need to feed them carpet. yeah but it means that but keeping a parent means that you need to feed them and if you yes. if you have been on, on lockdown and on furlough and then you come off furlough and then you lose your job you suddenly don't have enough money. If you come off furlough, you don't have enough time to exercise them. But I think you've made that commitment. Yes. Uh, but what you can do is try and sell them. So I think don't you know? I don't think that there is a problem with people giving up dogs uh, that they've that they've taken. But in the right on. way. Long, I mean, because like, in the too right many way, dogs they, just thrown out into the streets and that's yes, uh, or just handed to a charity that we yeah. become overwhelmed. You need, uh, you know. Try and find someone, and there are various agencies yeah. that that will do this. We're not going to advertise them here. People can search for them themselves. But there are agencies will do is find a pet adoption agency. There are plenty of them, and find someone to adopt your pet. You, I mean, sometimes that that can include selling it for virtually market price. So it's not necessarily that it's free. Mm-hmm. But you search for someone who will take it on and be prepared to look after it properly and then so what, give it on yeah, what, rather than you struggling and then actually not looking after it properly. What are the top uh, three You know, hand it over then? to someone. Well, if, you've got, if you were looking for a dog or not necessarily a dog, but we, we, we're focusing on dogs, but if there might be other things. But let's yeah, say well, if you're dog, so, do, you do? do Well, I mean, before you even consider it, uh, uh, do your due diligence. Look at, uh, look, first of all, one thing, what is it that you want? Why do you want a dog? What is the who is living in your home? What is your home situation? And then you look in, you look up on the numerous different uh, uh, search searchable lists of dogs, at which you can put in these tests. You can, you know, you can search it yourself. There's no point me saying a particular one. I've used several of them. Different dogs have different needs. So uh, here you are. Do you have young children in the house? You can see whether the, these particular yeah. breed is good with children. Uh, are you prepared to do lots of exercise? Are you fit and able? You can look dogs, which need different exercise. Surprisingly, some dogs that you think were very active actually spend a lot of their time sleeping. So that may be one for you. And the third one is how much room do you have in your home? If you've got a small little flat, you don't want a Doberman Pinscher. And actually, you don't want a, a Welsh Collie like I have because they'll, they'll be just bouncing around the place and smash it up. So uh, look at uh, the size of your dwelling. Then look at the size of the dog and how active it is. Is it a dog that will lie around most of the day? Mm. Then that's fine. And finally, are you allergic? You know, you can get dogs. That, they say they're hypoallergenic, but none of them are really that. None of them are free for any form, giving anyone any form of allergy. But some of them are close to that. Um, one of the, there's some breeds that have been bred specifically for that. There's the Poodle, which is a long-standing breed, but also the Labradoodle, halfway between a Labrador and a Poodle, which uh, which has that sort of woolly fur that doesn't affect people is unlikely to affect you if you have allergies. If you keep all those things in mind before you get the dog, then you're less likely to want to get rid of it. But as I say, life changes can happen, and I don't want that to mean that you've got to just keep the dog and keep looking after it. Where I agree with you, Mark, saying a li- a, li- a dog is for life, and indeed that title of this episode was "Dog is a life for life, not just for lockdown." Yeah. But I mean the life of the dog. Not your life. You haven't got to keep it for the rest of your life. So, yeah, if if you aren't able to look after it, uh, uh, give it away or sell it to someone who can and is prepared to look after it. Because you've taken on that responsibility. The I would say the least you can do is well, find a new home if you're not able to cope. And there may well be circumstances. May well be that circumstances have changed. I, so I was going to add one final thought thing to on do. this, um, which yeah. is uh, something you slightly touched upon, which is that the, uh, always consider all the things that you mentioned, but also yeah. there's the emotional side. Because let's be honest, for those people who really do like a dog, you've got to consider that if you're going to give it up, it's an emotional attachment. If your children yes. have become attached to it and you take it away, um, that, that's, that's a bit of a trauma. So uh, you need to think about the emotional side too. Yes. Sure, yes. And I think that's it. The dog is uh, for life. The dog needs to be looked after the whole of its life. It's not just for lockdown, taken from the old saying, a, a dog is for life, not just for Christmas. And the trend of giving puppies at Christmas and then having no plan for caring for it afterwards. Don't be that person. 
don't do that. Well, that's uh, all from us here at Mark and Pete Live for this episode. But remember to get in touch, uh, leave a comment below. We love to read your comments. And if they're especially scandalous and insulting, we'll be sure to include them in next episode. But bye for now. Catch you next time.